I'm Jeremy Winters and on today's shooting demonstration we're going to try to recreate the effects of air density. Now for, for just uh, simple terms uh, we're going to define air density as a given altitude and temperature. Uh, for every altitude and temperature there's a given air density so just to make it easier for everybody we're going to use altitude and temperature when talking about air density. Now why does air density have such a huge effect on our bullet? Well, it comes right down to the denser the air is, the more drag the, is gonna happen on the bullet, which is gonna cause it to affect the trajectory more. So the lower in the elevation and the lower in the temperature, the denser the air becomes and the bullet has more drag downrange, which slows it down. The higher you go in elevation and the higher in temperature, the less dense the air is, the less drag acts upon the bullet and the bullet hits higher or has an easier time getting through that atmospheric condition. So at the range today what we're going to do is we're going to get a quick zero on our gun just to make sure that we've got a good zero on it and then we're going to take off. We've got a couple hour drive. We're going to head up on top of the mountain uh, so we can show a great uh, change in air density and show you why or the disadvantages of having an actual uh, yardage turret set in, in yards to a specific altitude and temperature. All right, looks like we've got a good zero down there on the steel. Uh, we're gonna pack up our stuff and we're gonna head to the mountain and show you the effect of air density on your trajectory. All right, we've made it up here. Uh, it took us a couple hours to drive up here, but we finally made it. Um, we are at 10,200 feet um, of elevation and we've got about 55 degrees in temperature. So it's gonna be a great example of how air density affects your trajectory and we're going to show you the tools that we use to compensate for that. So what we're going to do real quick here is we've got a target downrange at 900 yards. I'm going to dial in 900 yards not making any adjustment and we're going to see how high on that target we're going to hit without making any compensation. And then we'll go down there and check the target out and I'll explain to you how we make those compensations for air density in the field. All right, here we are at the target. Uh, we've got a 40 inch tall target. Um, here was what I was aiming at right here at the base. I tipped it up sideways so we could see more of the elevation on there. Um, we've got a three shot group here at 900 yards. Um, we are exactly 30 inches um, from the center of the group to the center of my bullseye. So from where we'd set our zero at 2,500 feet to 10,200 feet, we had 30 inches of vertical deflection in this in, in just this turret. So how do we make the compensation for this 2,000 foot turret up here at 10,000 feet? There are companies and other companies out there who build these same yardage turrets fixed at one elevation and their solution is well let's just sell guys four or five different turrets. So you're up here on the mountain well it might be 7,500 feet or 10,000 feet you're juggling around with these four or five different turrets having to swap them out when you change elevations it's just not a viable solution. And what we've noticed here at Gunworks is we've evolved 
from that solution, from going from multiple turrets to changing them out in the field, we've evolved to, uh, Aaron has designed the uh, BR2 rangefinder. Now, the reason this is such a special unit up here is, is I can run my 2,000 foot turret and the rangefinder has a built-in weather station and a built-in ballistics program. So I can take my data from my turret, input it into the rangefinder, and it will make the elevation, temperature, and shot angle corrections for me out here on the field. So with the rangefinder, instead of having my shots here, it would have told me to dial to the exact point of aim for that elevation, and my shots would have been here. So for all you guys out there who are running those fixed elevation turrets, we know there's a lot out there because uh, we've been building these things for years and years. The solution is, is to actually run the BR2 rangefinder and then it alleviates number one, multiple turrets, multiple charts out in the field, um, a handheld calculator. It, it alleviates all that just by running the BR2 rangefinder.